Hello. Welcome to the question and answer session where we're going to look at demand and supply part one. Specifically in this video, we're going to look at the market and determining the equilibrium. My name is Elias Muau. So let me take you to uh, today's question. So the demand and supply functions of a, uh, of a commodity are given by P equal negative 2 QD plus CGST and P equal 0 0.5 QS plus 30. Where P, QD and QS denote the price in Zambian kwacha, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied respectively. The questions for today are, number one, find the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. And in part two, we are asked to sketch the demand and supply functions on one diagram. Part three wants us to find the consumer surplus when the market is in equilibrium. In part four, we are asked to find the producer surplus when the market is in equilibrium. And connected to these uh, to part three and part four is part five, which wants us to find the total surplus when the market is in equilibrium. We'll divert away from this and look at the interventions of the government through taxation, where we are going to look to determine the effect on the market equilibrium if the government decides to impose a fixed tax of five quarter on each good. And la uh, lastly or finally, we'll uh, have to find the deadweight loss associated with the tax in part six above. Now, in this part one, I'll only focus on the first two, that is finding the equilibrium price and quantity and as well as uh, uh, and sketching the demand and supply functions on one diagram. In part two, we will find the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the total surplus. And in part three, we are going to determine the effect on the market equilibrium if the government imposes a tax of five quarter, and uh, we'll also find the deadweight loss. So join me as I present part one and part two solutions. Okay, so for us to find the equilibrium price, if you want, what you can do best here is try to solve and find the equilibrium price and quantity and then compare with the solutions that I will present here. So in equilibrium, we note that quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied, which will just be equal to the quantity. Meaning that when we go to our demand function and our supply functions, we can actually substitute where there's QD and where there's QS and put Q there because the three are equal when we are in equilibrium. So with that, we are saying that negative two Q plus CGST, which is the demand, must be equal to uh, 0 0.5 Q plus 30, which is the supply. And from here, we can rearrange and solve for Q. So we can bring 30, the other side. In, uh, in normal mathematics, we say uh, subtract 30 this side and subtract 30 the other side so that what you have will be the same. Or easier, the easier one will be since we know that when we subtract 30 here, we'll, be, we'll have zero. So just subtract 30 from the other side. Or allow 30 to go the other side so that it is subtracted, the sign will change to negative. The same way, we're going to get a negative 2Q and take it to the other side, and when it goes the other side, it becomes positive. So with that, what we we'll have is 60 minus 30 is equal to 0.5Q plus 2Q. So you note here that our 30 has become negative because it has gone on the other side of the equal sign, or simply put, we have subtracted 30 here and subtracted 30 the other side. Our negative 2Q has also gone the other side and it has become positive. We can simplify this. When we simplify, we'll have 60 minus 30, which will be equal to 30, and 0.5Q plus uh, 2Q to give us 2.5Q. Now, in case you're confused why the Q is on the other side and the 30 is on the, on the left-hand side, it, it doesn't matter. If you want, you can rearrange and have 2Q, uh, 2.5Q is equal to 30. 
and then from here we can divide through by 2.5 cube so that we get the value of q which is the quantity and then by so doing we have uh, 2.5 q divided by 2.5 q which will leave us with q and then 30 divided by 2.5 q will give us 12 therefore our q is equal to 12 meaning that our equilibrium quantity is equal to 12. When we want to find the equilibrium price, what we need to do is uh, substitute or plug in, substitute the value of Q, which is 12, into either the demand or in the supply function. In this presentation, I'm going to use both equations so that we verify that indeed the price that we are going to get using the demand function will be the same price that we'll get using the supply function. So by using the demand first, where there is QD here, remember we said that in equilibrium, QD is equal to QS and this will be equal to Q. So since I've found the value of Q to be 12, I can substitute the value uh, of 12 there into the demand function by removing QD there. So what we'll have then is negative 2 multiplied by 12, since my Q is 12, then plus 60. If I simplify this part here, what I'll have is negative 24 plus 60, which will give me a price of 36 kwacha. Now, just to verify that indeed, even if I get, even when I substitute this uh, uh, Q of 12 into the supply function, I will still end up with a, uh, a 36 quarter. Let's do that verification using the supply function. So for verification purposes, we have our supply function P equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 30. Remember again that in equilibrium, QS is equal to Q. So since I already have the value of Q here to be 12, I'll put 12 where there's QS and then uh, solve the equation. So what I'll have then is P will be equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by 12, since my Q is 12, and then plus 30. And if I simplify this part here, 0 0.5 times 12 will give me 6, because this will be like half times 12. So I'll have 6 plus 30, and by simplifying, I'll end up with a price of 36 quarter, which indeed confirms uh, both using the demand and the supply functions that 36 quarter is the equilibrium price and that 12 units is the equilibrium quantity. Therefore, the equilibrium quantity is 12 units while the equilibrium price is 36 quarter. Let's go to part two of this question, or the question two of this uh, presentation. In question two, we are asked to sketch the demand and supply functions on one diagram. Now, in sketching the demand and supply functions, uh, given that you already know what the functions are, you need to work with the intercepts. It will not be of any use uh, for this presentation for you to go and plot all the numbers in their uh, uh, in a good order. What you need is just know what the vertical intercept is, know what your horizontal intercept is, and then join the two points since our function is linear. So there's no need to panic because we don't have a graph paper. So just work with the intercepts and then join the points with a straight line given that your function is linear. Let's do that. So I will start with uh, uh, the demand function. So we are going to plot the demand function and then let, I mean, find the intercept for the demand function and then find the intercept for the supply function and then join, uh, plot the graphs. We start with the vertical intercept. Now the vertical intercept, which in, your, uh, in the uh, general mathematics they call the y-axis, the vertical intercept in the demand function here is the value of P when quantity is zero. So we are putting zero where there is quantity and find the value of P. Since when plotting our demand function, we put price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. So we are replacing the value of uh, Q with zero and then solve the equation. If we do that, we put zero where there is Q in the demand function and uh, if after simplifying, we end up with a value of P which is equal to 60. Meaning that our coordinate that we are plotting on the demand function or on the demand uh, curve is 0, 0,60. 
The next thing we need to, uh, to know also is the horizontal intercept. That is the value of the uh, quantity when price is zero. And this is a, a point where the line will cut the horizontal axis. So to find the horizontal intercept, we make the value of P to be equal to zero. By plugging the value of P in the de uh, demand function of zero, we end up with this equation. And by rearranging, we'll have 2QD is equal to 60. Since this uh, part here is negative, so we can take it the other side where there's a zero and it will become positive. And here we can divide through by two to get the value of QD when price is zero. And by so doing, we'll end up with 30 because two divided by two will be one, while 60 divided by two will give us 30. Meaning that the, co meaning that the coordinate that we are plotting is 30 comma zero. So once we have our zero comma 60, which is a vertical intercept, and our 30 comma zero, which is our horizontal intercept, we can join the two points with a straight line, and that line will represent the demand function, and it will be a demand curve. Maybe before we go to the sketching of the demand curve, let's also find the, sub, uh, the intercepts for the supply function, so that when we go to plotting, we do the plotting at once. So with our supply function of P equal to 0.5 QS plus 30, we can find our vertical intercept as a value of P when quantity supplied is equal to zero. Meaning that in my supply function, I have to substitute uh, QS with zero. So I bring in zero where there's QS. Doing that, I'll have P equal to 0.5 times uh, zero because QS now is equal to zero. Then plus the 30. Solving that to give me a value of P, which is equal to 30, meaning that I know that my horizontal intercept is, I mean, my vertical intercept is equal to uh, 0, 30. So it means that when I draw my supply curve, it will cut the price axis at uh, 0, 30. We also need to get the horizontal intercept, which is the value of Q when P is equal to 0. Now, if P is equal to zero, it means that we need to get this zero and plug it into the supply function here, where there is P. So we remove P and put zero. By so doing, we'll have this function here. So zero will be equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 30. Then we can rearrange. So we can take uh, 30 the other side or QS of uh, 0 0.5 QS the other side and solve for Q. By so doing, this part, when it goes the other side, it becomes a negative. So we'll have negative 0 0.5 QS is equal to 30. By dividing through by negative 0 0.5, we'll end up with a uh, quantity supplied of negative 60, which means that our horizontal intercept will, be, uh, will have a coordinate of negative 60, 0. Meaning that given that I know what my vertical uh, inter uh, intercept is, and what my horizontal intercept is, I can join the two points with a straight line since the function is linear, and that function uh, will represent a demand curve, I mean supply curve, or the supply function. Let's go to the sketching of the diagram. So take note, we have uh, for the demand, the vertical intercept is 0, 60, while the horizontal intercept is 30, 0. For the supply function, the vertical intercept is 0, 30, while the horizontal intercept is negative 60, 0. So with the price in Zambian Kwacha on the vertical axis and the quantity on the horizontal axis, I take note that my, uh, for the demand function, my vertical intercept is uh, 0, 60. So I will plot uh, 60 there because I already have my 0 here. So this part here is a vertical intercept, which is 0, 60, meaning that when the quantity is 0, the price will be 60. And on the horizontal uh, intercept, we have a 30, so we have a 30, 0, meaning that when the price is 0, the quantity uh, demanded will be 30. So since I have the two intercepts, all I need to do is get a ruler and join the two points with a straight line, such as, such as the one that I've drawn here. And this line, therefore, is our 
demand curve representing the demand function. We also need to plot our supply uh, curve. So with that, we note that our vertical intercept on the supply curve was uh, 0,30. So I plot my 0,30 there. And I also have a horizontal intercept of negative 60,0. Now, if you look at this diagram, I don't have values here on the negative side. So just to support the direction of your, of your curve, you may need to extend the line to the negative side and then put your uh, intercept there of negative 60. And this 60 is the uh, amount of uh, uh, quantity when the price is zero. Since I now have my quantity, my horizontal intercept, and my vertical intercept, you can get a ruler and join the two points with a straight line since our functions were linear. And this will represent our supply function. And it is our supply curve. Now, I will not focus much on the negative uh, part. I'm interested in the positive part because in, in economics, the negative values will not give you a clear direction of what is happening because it's somewhat absent because a price of zero and you get a negative uh, a quantity of negative 60, that will not give you a clear direction or a clear meaning of what a consumer will do or what a supplier will do on the market. So I'll only focus on the positive side. So I will redraw this diagram, ignoring the negative, so that we just present our diagram with positive values. And that function and the graph will look like this one here. Now we note that uh, at this point, which is our equilibrium point, we know what our equilibrium price is. That is at 36 quarter, And our associated equilibrium quantity was found to be 12. So this, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the discussion on uh, part one and part two of uh, demand and supply. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, Elias Muau, so that you get uh, automated updates whenever I post new videos on YouTube related to economics. If you are interested in economics and you have any questions, please send an email with your question to muauelias at gmail.com. If you have any other parts that you would want me to present, any other uh, maybe uh, field within economics that you want me to present, please feel free to uh, send a request to moelias at gmail.com and I'll do a recording and post it on this channel so that you can watch and be able to understand the concepts that you want. See you in part two.